I think in New York, it was more... Um, I don't know. I met my boyfriend really fast when I moved to Miami. So I didn't really have a lot of single days here. But I used to come here like to visit. And then I saw, I think here guys are more willing to um, like spend more time with you. Because in New York, everybody's just on their grind and they're in their offices until 8 p.m. And then they might see you for dinner if they have time. But here, because it's such a relaxed lifestyle in a way, like if somebody is a real estate agent, not that there's not any in New York, but I'm just just giving an example that like here they can meet you and then you can go to an event with them and then you can go to the beach and then people like to spend more time in Miami, I think. But that doesn't mean that the relationship is any more serious than it was in New York. I think people here just have more time because it's like a more relaxed lifestyle so they can spend more time with the girl. But... Sometimes girls then think that if if you take them out to, you know, somebody's birthday party, that it's like, oh, it means that you guys are official right now, but it doesn't mean that. Today, we have the pleasure of hosting Cornelia Slonsky, host of widely acclaimed Bougie Best Friend podcast. In this episode, we'll be discussing her American journey with special focus on things she's renowned for, which are dating, relationships, and lifestyle. Hope you enjoy the show. I guess like Coco, she's she's uh, famous by Coco. Everyone says Coco. I watched it in all the all the shows. Everybody calls me Coco. I'll tell you why. Because when I first moved here, my name is Cornelia, Cornelia Slunsky, and I was introducing myself as Cornelia, and nobody understood that. So then I was like Cornelia, and then I was like, that's that's not my name. So then I just went by Coco because, and this is a mistake. And honestly, this is what I wish I didn't do. Instead of me like owning my name and saying. Cornelia, Cornelia, I just learned my name. I was saying, oh, just Coco, like whatever, just call me Coco. So it's easier for you. Instead of like, you know, when Beyonce and Rihanna started becoming, you know, meeting people and becoming famous, they didn't like change their name. So yeah, I why think, should you change your name? You know, you I didn't change it officially. I'm still Cornelia, Cornelia. But your nickname is people like this nickname. People like, like calling me Coco. I think it's like easier to remember, but I'm getting back to... Cornelia, Cornelia. It should, it should. I mean, even my name, but my name kind of translates Alexander when you say it in yeah. English. Alex. It's Alex. And someone speaking Spanish is Alec. So uh-huh. it's kind of translatable to the oh, different languages. They call languages. me Cornelija too. Cornelija? Cornelija. Cornelija. That's my favorite. <laughs> well, that's your favorite. I was going to ask you which one is yeah. your favorite. Yeah, but growing up, always my name was always like a topic. Like a, it was always like something about in it. In a good way or a bad way? You liked it or you might? I mind? loved, no, when I was growing up, when I was a little girl, I hated it. I wanted to be called like Anna, Ivana, something, <laughs> something, you know, something easy to pronounce. Something easy to, and my brother's name is Ivan. So I was like, why did you give me this name? And you gave him such a nice name. But now I love my name. But it's, it's difficult for America. Is it for America? Yeah. So how difficult it was when you're, I mean, moving to U.S., you're, you're back home. You're like, okay, I'm finally moving to the United States. Mm-hmm. You, can you remember that excitement that you had? I do. I, my whole life, I was obsessed with the U.S. I was watching all the shows, all the movies, and I was, I wanted to be here. And then I came on an exchange program, and I was like, this is, I couldn't believe this life actually exists because I thought it's only in the movies and then I saw it's actually real and is it 100% real I think I mean depending on the movie you watch (laughs) (laughs) but I think that you I just felt like that I used to live in New York I live in Miami now but I used to live in New York and it was just such a the energy the people if you feel like everything is possible and then just like walking down the streets of New York I felt like wow, I can't believe I'm here. I never thought I'm going to be here. People, obviously, growing up, I always had these big aspirations and big dreams, but people were telling me that, you know, like, it's too much and you're never going to get there. And then when I got there, I was like, wow, I did it. You still have that excitement? That um, you had? Yeah, I mean, it probably changed, but it, it still excites you? It excites me to live in Miami, honestly. I love my life here. My life here. I've been here for three years almost, and every day when I wake up, I'm happy. And when I was living in New York... It was just a little... It, New York is just a lot of grind and a lot of hustle and everything is so hard and it's it's a lot of um, 
pain in New York. <laughs> that's why. Oh my yeah. God, that's not a good way to remember New York. Is. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like you know, living when obviously when I first moved, it's like living with multiple roommates, living in a bad area, going to work with a train for an hour. It was just a lot of hustle. Now I work from home, and I live with my boyfriend. We both work from home. Like it's a very, let's say, comfortable life. Versus back there, it was just like but it's, it's you were grinding. growing. That's why it's it was uncomfortable. You're growing. You're figuring yeah. it out. You're it's a new country, new jobs. You're trying to trying to become who you want to become. You're trying to do things that you want to do. You know, it takes years. That's why I think it's also you know it's very character build, building. I think everybody in their twenties should do something like that. It doesn't have to be New York, but just go somewhere where you can. I mean, it's, it's, it's a not challenge. Somewhere. It's one of the most challenging cities to live in. After that, you go somewhere else, you're like, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, Miami, ch I'm chilling here. <laughs> yeah, it's just cr cruise mode. The weather is nice, you know. It, where were you before Miami? Uh, in Miami, I mean, I've been here 10 years, you know. I came straight, we went to Alaska first, and then mm. I was there as a student a program. So, it was, uh, I mean, first I, I'm coming to U.S., and then uh, the guy in the uh, immigration officer, where are you going? Where are you going, buddy? I was like, Alaska. Why Alaska, man? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like yeah, I don't trying, know, you tell me. Trying to make some money and then save it and then go back to spend somewhere else. Oh, yeah, good plan, good plan. See, that's that's it. You actually worked out. So, you know, you, you know how difficult it's beginning when you when you have, like, no money when you're coming here, yeah. almost no money, and you just maybe not even a suitcase of mm -hmm. clothes, and you just, okay, let's figure it out. You know nothing. Yeah. You know, have no job before. I mean, some people have had jobs or something. So a lot of us are just students. You finish the college, and you know we don't work mm -hmm. back home. If you go to college, you don't have a job. I much. always work, though. So there's some, but you come here, and you're like, okay, so what do you do? So figure it out. And mm -hmm. then it's so many things to figure it out. So, so but I mean, that's why it takes, takes years. I always, even though my parents, like, they have, like, decent amount of money, I was not, never, like, hung like I never needed to work when I was growing up but it, since I was 16 I just wanted to work because I never want to tell like I never wanted to have give somebody the power to tell me that I can or cannot do something so if somebody's like giving me you know your parents are giving you money for allowance or something they're gonna be like oh you already spent enough like I'm no I want my own money and I think that's what made me survive in new york because i was like i'm used to this shit like i, I can do this but. yeah i mean definitely i mean but there's also some things happen on the way you have difficult mm -hmm. moments in new york and life in general you remember any difficult moments you really had to go through in the beginning you're like okay let me i gotta push through this i remember one like the first thing that came to my mind right now was so i was in jersey first for one week totally random and then i came to new york i knew one girl there and she was my childhood friend. We were not super close, but as I was, as I was, as it was leading up to me moving to New York, I was constantly talking to her on the phone and whatever. And she said, you know, when you come to New York, you can stay with me. We can figure it out. And she lived with a roommate. And I came to her apartment, and this was me, literally landing in New York two days later. I'm in her apartment, staying with her, and then her roommate was a bitch. She did not want me there. And she was, um, so yeah, I was still like looking for a new job or something like that because I had something before and that didn't work out. And then her roommate said that I either have to start paying rent or I have to move out. And it was like my second day there. Oh <laughs> I was like, God. what do you mean pay rent? I'm sleeping on your couch. Like you have your room. She has her room. Like, why do I have to pay your rent? And I was trying to be such a good guest that I was like bringing them fruit. And I was, I don't know. I just did a few like cute things for the apartment. And I remember I was alone walking in Central Park when my friend called me and she's like, hey, I have to tell you something. Like my roommate is complaining. She's saying that you need to start paying rent and I don't know what to do and blah, blah, blah. And I just started bawling, crying. And I'm like, how is this possible? I just came here. Why is... And I just, right away, I tasted that New York. Right, that's America in general. You know? Yeah. Whatever, you got to bring the was money. Was she American? In. I don't even know what she... Who was she? Maybe, maybe she got bad experiences. Maybe she was a Balkan, too. I <laughs> don't knows? know. See, I don't, she's so insignificant in my life that I don't even know her name. But, but she but is. You remember her because the I story what helped you grow and you, things you did. So yeah. that's... It's part of the story. No, I'm still kind of friendly with the girl that I was staying with, but her roommate was, she's a very sad human. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's uh, all the stories that mean you push through them and you get better yeah. and you learn. There's who knows how many more you forget because we forget mm -hmm. bad stuff, most of the bad stuff. Some really bad stuff is stuff difficult to forget, but we all, but when you think about it, every day negative things happen, mm -hmm. but you forget all of them. You're thinking, oh, it bothers you, you get upset, but tomorrow mm -hmm. you... Or in a week, 
because we can't remember so many things. <laughs> so you're trying to focus on the positive, you know. Try. But the positive, you know, after being here a couple of years and you could stuff in the mirror, like, okay, I'm doing better, I'm getting better. That's, a, that's, not, that's I don't think, one of the best rewards you're going to get. Give me your story. My story. Oh, my God. Well, the first thing that came to your mind, you have to give me the worst story. Oh, it was, the one. first thing when it was coming here, it was like, we started making money. It was like, oh, but you got to make you money. It's the first time in my life, you know, mm -hmm. I did some, th some jobs, but not like a full-time job. And then you start making money. You're like, oh, this is good. And he's so motivated to, and I borrowed money to come here. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I got th that money that I borrowed, sent it back, I was so happy. Mm -hmm. Because I prove, you know, you ask money from your parents, they're like, yeah. no, you're going to go, you're not gonna, he's not going to bring that money back. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not happening. They don't, maybe they believe in you, but they're like, okay, he's a kid. And then you yeah. do that, your first accomplishment, then you're like, okay, what's next? So then you start working, then you we just work. I don't remember anything. I mean, I remember stuff, but it's mostly work, work, work. We just work, I don't know, 90, 100 dollars a week. I don't even try, to, try not to remember. <laughs> we lost like 10 pounds or something like over the... What did you do? It was a... Uh, uh, actually, my first job was in Home Depot, uh -huh. and I had a second job working in a hotel and a restaurant. So it was like uh -huh. those kind of jobs mostly. So one is your sponsor, your program, and then mm -hmm. the other one, restaurant, you make more money. So it was it was good. I mean, it's new experience learning English. It took me like a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Like I was, I knew English really good, but I never used it. I had all mm -hmm. the words and everything, and then a couple of weeks I was stuttering, and then I don't know where I just start speaking it. And it was yeah. great after like a couple of weeks. I was like, okay, this is nice. People think, oh, so you're born here? I'm like, no, I just got here a month ago. Like, what? <laughs> so that, that was nice. And then after, I mean, those four months of hard work, you're like, oh, I made it. Finally, let's go swimming, traveling, spend all the money. You know, that's actually the first time. I got the second time was the same thing I did. But second time, I was like, I got to save money because I got to start my life here. Mm -hmm. So you got to have some kind of savings to to start off. You know, you can't just come in and expect you're going to get a job tomorrow. Yeah. Then difficult times with... You know, at least I had some friends. I'm still great friends with them, you know, so that's an amazing thing. Not everyone's lucky to have that. So when you have that, it's kind of easier to, to share the burden and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Like you had a problem with the rent. I didn't have that problem because I have some friends yeah. that we, it was easy. I, I thought I'm not going to have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she showed me otherwise. No, but uh, how hard was it to make new friendships here? Honestly, not hard. I don't know why everybody's always... So I lived in New York. I moved around a lot in New York as well. I moved to Miami on my own. Because I was living in New York and I used to be a makeup artist, like a full-time makeup artist. And then obviously COVID happened. And then I was getting a bunch of photo shoots in Miami because New York was still pretty shut down. And I was just traveling back and forth. And I just, I never had a problem meeting people. And people always ask me like, oh, if I move to a new city, how am I going to meet someone? I'm like, I don't know, just start talking to somebody. Just start talking to somebody, actually show interest in them. And you're going to learn something. So like right now when we started, you know, talking, I could have just sat here and be like, okay, guys, let's start. Or we can like start chit-chatting yeah, and course. make conversation and like something. But I think I'm just also outgoing. And I used to work in hospitality and you just learn. Actually, restaurant jobs are the best type of jobs, I think, for yeah. building your character, learning how to talk to people, learning how to deal with a lot of bullshit that's not your fault. Learning, and saying sorry, even if it's not saying, your fault. Yeah, when you're, it's not your fault. Apologizing for every type of mistake that happens. And I like that part because it's the, the stakes are not high. It's like, yeah, maybe you mess up somebody's meal. Okay, fine. You're going to give them another meal. But if something like that happens at your first job, maybe you're working in finance and you, you know, mess up somebody's account, you're not going to know how to act and then you're going to freak out. So I think restaurant jobs are just a great way like to learn how to deal with people and how to navigate issues that are going to happen, whether it's your fault or not your fault. Yeah, this, I remember one guy like a long time ago pulled me, I was like was working a lot and then I was just, I had a scooter, so I'm driving Miami Beach. I had one guy stop me, oh, can I ask you some directions? And I would ask me some, I'm like, God, I don't know, I don't know what it is. And I was like, I was like uh, I'm sorry, thank you. I said, I'm sorry, thank you. No need for anything. If you just asked me the direction, I said, no, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know what that is. I'm sorry, thank you. And I'm looking, why did I just say this? Just because repetitive. You used to, yeah. You're just, you're just saying that. I'm sorry, thank you, bye, have a good yeah. day. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a normal thing. One of the first impressions I had in, in Alaska, one of the GMs at one of the stores, he was like, uh, can you please do this thing for me? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Coming from Serbia, which people say, uh, 
give me that, do that. Yeah. There's yeah. no, yeah. please, yeah. thank yeah. you. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, well, we'll do it. <laughs> so even right now, I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> trying to speak. The, everyone uses something differently. Words, language, and just expression. And you, you change. How, what do you, when you, when you go back, when you visit, what's the, do you feel that you changed? Oh, so much. I obviously love my home and I love my family and they still all live in Croatia. I just feel like, I don't know, I don't like going back. <laughs> this is crazy. Like if people, like, I, I'm sorry for everybody <laughs> listening. I just, all of my friends that I was close with, like they all have kids, they all moved, moved somewhere else or we just don't have that much in common anymore. I don't know. I just have, and also every time I go back, I always stay in my hometown, which is Zagreb. And then maybe I'm going to go for a vacation for one week. So I feel like every time I come back, it's like seeing all the cousins, which again, I love, I hate giving like all these disclaimers, but I don't want people to like start roasting me right away. But it's like, I go there and it's almost like, I don't have so much fun. I go maybe for a week, it's great, like seeing my parents and all that. But then it's like, okay, you got to see this cousin, got to see that one, got to see the uncles, got to see that, got to see this. It's not what you want to do. You know, it's just not what something. I want to do. Like you, you go there to take care of stuff. That's so that's why last time I was in Europe in October, I was in Spain and then I was planning to see my family anyway. And they said, why don't you come back to Croatia and just we can hang there. And I said, let's just do something different. Let's go. And then we met up in London. And we spend a week in London, like with my family, instead of, you know, just being at home and watching TV and everybody's on their phone and my mom makes something. I was like, let's create some kind of different memories. But going back to your question, I feel like people in Croatia, sometimes they just can't relate to what you're saying. And it's obviously, I, I get it because we've, I've been away for 10 years, but sometimes it's hard to... Even like, I don't know, even have a conversation with people about stuff that happens here. They're like, that's not true. They don't, you, they don't believe you. Yeah. They don't, I mean, you were on a different path completely, doing different things. You know, their people, I mean, they move, but they don't move that much, you know. I'll they have an internet example. right now, so they can see things, but they don't, they can experience their life. I'll give you an example. When I was a makeup artist and I was, I'm never going to forget this. I was sitting with like, you know, having coffee at our little main square and every time I would say I, I was a makeup artist and there was a guy sitting there, they would be like, oh, do I need some mascara? Like, do you want it? <laughs> Salty comment. That's just so bad. And I'm like, dude, I make more <laughs> money than you make in, I don't know, like they just disregard, disrespect what you do. And then he like works at his daddy's company and he thinks he's, you know, the man. And I'm like, yeah, actually I do makeup for men too, for a lot of commercials and movies. What about you? What's your job? And then, you know, people just like to put you down because they just don't understand what you're doing. Yeah, because they think you're higher than them. That's why they're trying to put you down in a way. Yeah. Because, but just their perception. You know, everyone sees it differently. You see them differently. They, and it's different. I mean, everyone, whoever you talk to, and it's a different experience. But I don't think it would be strange if you came all the way here, did all the things you did, <laughs> you've done, and then you go back and, and you're on the same level with those people there. But funny, I have, I have a friend, she was just visiting me last year, well, last weekend, and she's been here for 15 years. She's like, I love going back. I love just having fun with my friends. I love, she just loves her life in Croatia. And she like almost wants to spend six months there and six months here. I just don't, I just don't see that. But everyone loves different things. Not everyone yeah. the same. Imagine if you love the same things. Oh yeah, that would be boring. That would be extremely boring. And how, how much rent would be in Miami? How often you go back? No, not often enough. I would like to go more, but you know, that's, <laughs> it depends. You know, I always had a dream to come back eventually to live there. Mm -hmm. But you don't know, you know, have to eventually see. And then later on, you'll have a lot of people with couples that have kids and families. Mm -hmm. I talked to a lot of them. They're thinking about going back. Now when they're young, well, they start having families and kids. Like, they're like, oh, maybe this is, I got to work out here. You, you don't have help. You have family there yeah. to help you with the kids, different schools, different environment here. You know, by yourself, you got to get a babysitter. That what is if you're both true. working. How much is schooling here, private schools? So you get, you start doing that and you're like, maybe your American dream is not fulfilled. You need to make millions and millions of dollars. And you're like, yeah. okay, can I afford this lifestyle that I want to have? So, you know, it's, so that's why a lot of people are going back or thinking about going back. It's just from the position, I don't think position of strength, but just reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is reasonable. I can go there, it's going to be a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Because after being trying here for 10, 15 years, you're like, okay, maybe I got to like yeah. re rethink this whole thing. Well, talking about American dream, what's an American dream for you? <laughs> I think freedom. 
is, and I, <laughs> I hate sounding like a Hallmark card, but it's just like, <laughs> you come here and you, if you, and obviously it's super difficult and I don't want to disregard the path that we all been through, but if you really want to work hard and you want to make things happen and you have a little bit of luck, your life is going to work out versus back home. I think it's not so easy to, you know, maybe start a business from scratch or start something from, you know, I think I love here that I don't, I just feel free. It's weird. Maybe it's, it's the Miami sunshine. I don't know, but I feel like I can do whatever I want. I mean, I work for myself. I do everything for myself. I don't know. I'm my own business pretty much. So I just do what I love. So, I mean, that's that's the one thing, right? Doing something that you love. You know, maybe yeah. not even 1% of people do what they love. You know, it's, yeah. it's really almost almost impossible. How many, but, how many people you know, they, they do what they love? But for me, that was never even... I was always saying, like, I didn't come to the U.S., leave my entire family, s- hustled and struggled for so long to not do what I want to do. Then I would just... Then what's the point of all of this? Yeah, that's true. That's, I always say the same thing. I mean, because by home, you don't like. Oh, I, I don't remember ever anyone's asking like, "What do you? What do you want? What do you love to do?" Oh yeah. <laughs> it was that I think I learned that here. Yeah. First time, I'm like, okay, so what do you? What do I? And then it's a confusion because you're like, come here, and there's so many options. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, so what do I pick? And then you got to pick one thing, and there's three million things. By home, you finish college, you pick something at eighteen, and good luck later. Yeah. You got to work that or figure it out, and usually you just stick with that. So it's a, a lot of things to. To, to learn and to make a lot of decisions. And here, I have a feeling I have to make like so many decisions every day. <laughs> and it's always left and right. What decisions did you make today? Today? The first decision was like to, to get up on time. So what, time? Get, what time you wake up? Oh my God, like nine, nine to ten. I, that's what I get up usually. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's the first decision, get up, get ready, start preparing for a podcast. I, wanted, I, wanted, mm-hmm. I was thinking, actually all day spent preparing for this mm-hmm. because I want to have... I want to have a mindset. I want to. I want to be like, okay, I'm doing a podcast. Let me figure mm-hmm. something interesting, something new. I, I researched you and I was like, ask something. What that's, did you find out? I, I mean, I was trying to find something that you haven't been asked. Did you go to Reddit? No, Reddit. No, that's no. that's too much. That's that's too much. <laughs> but I, I was looking through Instagram. I looked at some uh, podcast that you did. And I was like, let me just. And what I've noticed, you know, uh, you talk a lot about women ask you a lot of advice and a lot of different things. And we've talked from, uh, also I was like, let me, I haven't noticed that women actually asked you, uh, how do they get better for their, their guy? Mm. And maybe I just, I didn't listen to all of it, but. I actually, funny that you're mentioning this. I'm, I'm dropping my podcast every Friday and tomorrow's Friday. And I have an episode tomorrow, how to actually like glow up and be the hottest version of yourself and all that. Because I do speak about this. A lot, maybe not like in my, like on my feed and stuff, but in my stories and my podcast, I talk about like, you can expect. So we all want this, like as a woman, like you all want a guy that's like super successful and he's this and he's that and whatever. But like, do you think a super successful guy would date you if you are not, you're not taking care of yourself, you're not eating healthy, you're not working out, you're not. I don't, I'm not saying everybody has to live a super perfect life and be, you know, have a six pack and all that. You can have double standards. You got to. Yeah. I think that women sometimes act a little bit like, well, he should just love me for who I am, but then they don't love them for who they are. Like you don't love the guy. (laughs) Like you got to expect someone to love you if you don't love yourself. Yeah. I often get questions. I have this thing on my Instagram called what will Coco do? And people ask me questions on my stories and that's been going on for like two, three years now. And it's very entertaining. And sometimes they're like, oh, I'm engaged to a guy and I don't like his nose. Should I tell him to get a nose job? And then imagine. <laughs> What's the answer to that? Oh, my God. I'm like, I don't know why would you get engaged to a guy that you just not attracted to him physically or you don't like something about him. Imagine if. And then I always I always flip it on them. I'm like, if you're dating a guy and he tells you that you should get a boob job, how would you feel? <laughs> you would say that. I mean, you, you just don't like me. You don't. Whatever. So I always try to give tough love. And I think that's the European side of me that I just don't, I don't hold back. But I'm, I really want to help women. Like I'm really genuine with my advice. That's that's great. And yeah, I think that's my answer. Yeah, that's, I mean, they ask a lot of questions and I can't imagine how creative the questions can be. You get how many questions trying to figure out the answers. (laughs) So many questions. It's so funny. What do you think uh, they should ask and they never asked you? I think a lot of times women in not women 
I think when you're in a relationship and things are not going well, you're always pointing fingers at your partner and what is he doing wrong or what he should be doing better, but you're never looking at yourself. Maybe I should stop doing this. Maybe I should do that. I think there's a lack of self-awareness in general. And I was working so hard on myself to like be self-aware and to see my issues and, you know, my, my outbursts. And, you know, sometimes when I'm, I don't know, pissed off instead of having a normal sit down conversation, I'm just like, ah, fuck this. I, I. <laughs> it's easier to, easy to do that. Yeah. But I think self-awareness is key. And then just like knowing your strengths and your weaknesses. And if your partner is like if you're dating somebody and you're super jealous and if they know that you're jealous and they want to help you overcome the jealousy, they have to work through it with you, but you both both have to be willing to work on it. It can't just be like, oh, I'm jealous. That's just the way I am. Like, That's no. just the way I am. That I, I just, I can't even, I don't even know what to say anymore. I try to talk, but it's like they don't want to listen. You can't even, hopefully they'll listen to you because I, I don't even go into it anymore. And myself. I, I never say that. That's who I am. You know, that's, that's, uh, like, I mean, to a point, some stuff, yeah, but not in general, like a bad things. Oh, I can't change that. That's fine. I have to share something that some, just happened recently. There was a girl who was messaging me about this dude she was dating, and he was horrible, and he was treating her horribly, and I told her to break up with him. And I think she messaged me a few days ago saying, hey, Coco, I, I, I messed up. I didn't listen to you, and now I'm pregnant. What should I do? <laughs> what do you say? At and that I point? said, I am not going to tell you what to do with, you know, your body. You do whatever you want to do. If you want to have a kid, if you don't want to have a kid, that's totally up to you. But I mean, this is this is out of my <laughs> jurisdiction. I'm not going to get into this. But do they complain if you give them wrong advice? Or something? Yeah. A lot of girls unfollow me after I give them advice and then they come back. But do they give you the speech or they just unfollow you? Check Reddit. Uh, yeah um there's a lot of stuff about me on reddit but they sometimes they try to debate with me and i just don't even i'm like i'm not this is not up for debate like i this is my page if you want to share your opinion that's totally up to you you're not going to change my opinion with this one comment or something i don't know sometimes they're like well maybe he does maybe he that maybe he that i'm like don't, they don't ask me questions like we're, this is not a you, know. you have to be like that a little bit more stricter, especially from our background. You know, it's called traditionalist. Is it? I mean, that's yeah. the right term. What do you call today? Modern? Or what's the, what's the term for today's uh, versus uh, traditional versus whatever? Modern. So you know, things probably things changed a lot. So it's way different. I think we we should accept both a little bit of both. You know, you can't be yeah. completely traditionalist, but you know, what's the uh, how that affected your decisions being from from where you're from and you're growing up and when you're giving advice to someone. I think I love that I'm European, not because I just love the mindset that we have back home in a way like chivalry and gentleman type of things. I like that. And I, that was a big culture shock for me when I moved here. I was always lucky that I never really had to deal with stuff like that, but my friends did. And now today when people write to me and ask me crazy questions about, you know, paying on the first date and stuff like that is just it's crazy to me that people really consider stuff like that but um going what was your question again tell me i just got a little so frustrated. <laughs> i mean you're from croatia so you're growing up differently and uh -huh. you have to people ask you questions so how do you how much that it's affecting your decisions and your and your advice that you give to someone i think that I'm just very direct. And I also, I have an older brother. Mm -hmm. So growing up, he would always tell me what's going on with his relationships and his girlfriends. So I was always... You have different experience with different people. You can't have yeah. all the experience of the world. Uh, yeah. so you're learning from everyone. I had this male perspective. So, and he, my brother and I are really close. So he was always telling me about like stupid shit that girls do. <laughs> so then I would know when somebody like tells me something, I would kind of... I just kind of see through it. I don't know. I don't know if that's the Croatian or that's the well, That's some life European. experience, but it is something. But we actually always uh, call it read between the lines. Yeah. You know, it's always a read through the bullshit, as you yeah. said earlier. So it's just, you, especially some, things are obvious sometimes. Especially yeah. if you have a little, when you're younger, maybe not that much. But when you get yeah. older, like, you know, you already heard like 20 examples like that. You meet someone after five minutes, not even five minutes, 20 seconds, a minute, you know, mm -hmm. pretty much, can you talk to this person, you like them, you don't like them, the, and you, not, at least me, 99% 99 99 of the time, I'm right. I yeah. rarely make mistakes based on that. It's just because you have experience. When you're young, you don't yeah. have that much experience, so it's easier. I think it's also when you leave home and you're kind of on your own and you have to... 
Extra handle, careful. Yeah, you have to handle yourself. Like you have to, you're, you're with your, wait, I need to say this differently. You are left on your own pretty much. I mean, you said you had a lot of friends and you kind of came together or something Yeah, like we that. met them all here, but we're, all, we're together from day one here, so which, is, which yeah. is a great thing to have. But I was always very independent and I was always doing my own thing. And if I want to go somewhere, I'll go somewhere. So I was always... I don't know how to say this in English. <laughs> how do you say that? Oh my God. He's got a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. I just had to... I think when you move here on your own, you, ha you grow up super fast. You have to. I mean, if you want to try, if you want to be successful, if you want to do something. And I mean, but America is like that in general. You're 18 people kick you out and you figure it out. <laughs> I don't think for, for us it doesn't happen. At least not that often. It's a good and a bad thing. So I think it's, you it can be both, but here just, and then that's why all the issues start because you don't have parents. Like after 18, you're like by yourself, you go to college, you get lost and that's what happens. You know, you gotta make mm -hmm. bad, bad, really bad decisions. You know? <laughs> right now I have some friends that actually still call their parents asking for advice, which is, but not all the parents have advice, you know, but some people are actually more advanced than others. Even back home, you talk to someone, they're like 55, 60 and you talk to them like they were friends. Mm -hmm. okay. my parents I mean I call them but I can ask for different advice not that kind of li life advice that, mm -hmm. but I was like you know better you have, they would just leave it up to me they call me to ask me things <laughs> I have friends they call them you know, so you, it's better to ask someone older but it, it's, it's really different so I mean when you're uh, I, mean, I imagine dating scene is completely different in the United States than back home and anywhere mm -hmm. in the world so everywhere it, Everywhere is different. So what's the what's the things that women look to find in a guy the most? What's the like three, four, five things? like? They all want a very high value man, which basically means a guy that has money and a guy that's going to treat them right, a guy that's going to open their doors, who's going to bring them flowers, is going to take care of them and just just like be a gentleman. But also I understand that some, some girls are you know, super into the feminist movement and in a way in a in a way that they're like i don't need a man i don't need anybody to do anything for me so then sometimes guys are conflicted it's like if you're dating a let's say a european girl and european girls want you to open their doors and then you're dating an american and you're opening her doors and she's like why are you doing that i can open my own door <laughs> and it's it's an imbalance because nobody really knows what to do anymore because it's so i don't know it's a it, it's a, it's a new thing. I mean, we're all trying to trying to grow and learn, learn things, you know. But it's so many different nationalities. You know, mm -hmm. How you there? You have followers from all over the world, I assume, or yeah. people just from US asking. No, for all over the world. So what what's the how the, the questions different? What do you give different advice to everyone? Honestly, I never really look at who's asking me the question. I like I always want to be as objective as possible. So I don't even look at like is she American? Is she European? Is she this? Is she that? But Sometimes I have people that maybe they have cultural differences with their partner. I had a girl recently who she's American and her boyfriend is Polish. And she said that he sometimes comes off too, like, too straightforward and rude and that she doesn't know how to deal with that. And then I answered her question and it was just saying that we are a little bit more direct and that he should maybe bring her to a Polish restaurant, introduce her to more, like kind of bring her into the culture. And then this was super cute. Then a few girls that were from Poland, they messaged me and saying, hey, you can give her my Instagram and she can message me and then they can talk about like Polish guys. <laughs> and that it's, happened. So it's, it's like a nice community that I've built that like girls want to, like they really want to help each other. And actually last year I was hosting a trip with my followers and it was 13 girls from all over the world. And it was a common theme of like leveling up and wanting the best in life and not being afraid to go after it. Because I think a lot of people, when they consume my content, they think that I'm just saying that, you know, you deserve the best and you should, be, I, I think you should work for the best. Like you should, you should, it should be yours. It shouldn't be given to you because then it's not, it can be taken away if it's not, if you didn't build it yourself. So it was a really lovely trip. But th we were all so different, but it was so interesting how we all had a very similar mindset. Yeah, because it's in general, there's, everyone wants the best for themselves. You know? mm -hmm. There's not that many um, best things. You know? the, you know, we all know what's best, a couple, couple of common stuff. You know? But you're giving advice, you, you were single, uh, and then you're in a relationship. How did your advice change when you're giving it to someone? Funny enough, 
ever since I started this, like, kind of, I don't even like, people call me that I'm like a dating uh, something, like dating expert. I'm not. I'm just like a girl that has. You have to put a tag. You have to call you somehow. Yeah. Um, But I started posting this type of content when I was already in a relationship. People just didn't know because I didn't want to post him because it was kind of more interesting for this like single girl to post all this like, there was more comments coming in when you people just like commenting, oh, who are you to give us advice if you're single? But I'm like, he's sitting right here <laughs> and he's like helping me with the answers. But I have to say, as I've been doing this for a f- few years now, I opened my eyes on certain things and I changed my opinions. And I think that's totally normal because if you don't change your opinion, you just always stay the same. I don't know specific examples, but I think it helped. Like when you talk to a lot of people, you just learn so much and then you adjust. I mean, uh, you have to adjust. You're learning, you're moving, you're, you're, you're becoming a different person. You know, mm-hmm. When you get older, you start thinking differently. You know, that, that's all life in general, but something's never changed. And I mean, you talked about that or this already. Oh, I found it really interesting how you you said it. It's like uh, first date of coffee thing. I, I loved it. It was, it was <laughs> great. I mean, because we drink a lot of coffee back home. It's yeah. a coffee thing. Here, it's not even an official coffee. I think even back home, my perspective is if you go for a coffee, it's actually, it's not a bad thing. You, yeah. It's like almost like a dinner because you sit down in a nice place, you yeah. have a drink, and here coffee means we got to go to like coffee, truck, get some coffee on the way, yeah. and walk to the park. And yeah. so the, the, it's, you said, I mean, definitely not for go for a coffee. I agree completely. Tell me about your dating experience here. I'm, I have a relationship right now, so, uh-huh. you know, but it's... Miami dating scene, yeah. always a questionable thing, you know, single for a long time. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> I just met some uh, friends from Chicago. They're telling me, they all have families and kids. They're like, I love Miami, you know, but you guys, no one seems to have kids here. <laughs> so we're all like, most of us right now in a relationship, but like a couple of years ago, they were all single. We were all single. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's really difficult, you know, to find the right person to do anything here. Mm-hmm. But you, you got to, I mean, we all want to do it. We just have to find the right person for you. But Miami is really, really tricky. How is it the New York versus Miami? Is it a lot of bigger difference? I think in New York, it was more... Um, I don't know. I met my boyfriend really fast when I moved to Miami. So I didn't really have a lot of single days here. But I used to come here like to visit. And then I saw, I think here guys are more willing to um, like spend more time with you. Because in New York, everybody's just on their grind and they're in their offices until 8 p.m. And then they might see you for dinner if they have time. But here, because it's such a relaxed lifestyle in a way, like if somebody is a real estate agent, not that there's not any in New York, but I'm just just giving an example that like here they can meet you and then you can go to an event with them and then you can go to the beach. And then people like to spend more time in Miami, I think. But that doesn't mean that the relationship is any more serious than it was in New York. I think people here just have more time because it's like a more relaxed lifestyle so they can spend more time with the girl. But sometimes girls then think that if, if you take them out to, you know, somebody's birthday party, that it's like, oh, it means that you guys are official right now, but it doesn't mean that. The conversations are different. I remember, I well, we just moved to Miami first year and then I meet all the girls I was talking to and I'm going to go out. It was New York and New Jersey. You get some kind of conversation. Here was not that much conversation happening. Mm-hmm. They, they, they just you talk too much. You don't talk. How do I not? I always I'm used to talking. You're trying to schmooze your way through. <laughs> it's like okay, I'm an interesting guy. And then someone you oh New York, New Jersey. They're asking, what's your plan? I was mm-hmm. like, so what's my plan? I'm like, so it's kind of conversation. First, we're not even we just we just met. Are you talking about like dating apps or not just people dating, just meeting person? You know, that was like ten years ago. Dating uh-huh. apps are not even a thing at that time. Yeah, so just go out and meet someone. Is even in the club, it doesn't matter. It's, hey, where are you from? What are you doing? What's the plan? Three questions. Mm-hmm. Someone in New York or New Jersey, Miami. No one asks you what's the plan. What do they ask you? <laughs> Nothing. We just you, there's no questions. What are you doing? Where are you? Uh, where are you taking me out for dinner? Where are we meeting? It's shallow stuff. Interesting. And, and then it's difficult, at least for me, mm-hmm. that you get connected with someone on a, a deeper level because it was just shallow talk. And you get bored. I mean, beauty mm-hmm. goes all the way. I mean, some people can only take beauty. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like because after a while, I'm like, it's just, there's no point. I can't talk yeah. to this person. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, I like talking and I, I find myself in those situations a couple of times. And after a while, I just, I just I want to shoot myself. I don't want to, I stop talking. 
I always like talking and then I'm just quiet. And then what happens when you stop talking? You just don't see them anymore. That's Did it. Does she continue talking? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, always. Mm-hmm. They don't stop talking. I'm like, oh my God, why am I I'm just talking to myself? I mean, I'm still talking, just not saying anything out loud. So that's that's my experience. But I mean, Miami, it's, it's a different. Everyone's complaining about Miami dating scene. That's so interesting. I think it's because I just, as I said, I met my boyfriend really fast. So I didn't have that horrible Miami I mean, it's not horrible. I think yeah. just based on the person, you know. I don't think it's, it, it can be horrible. I mean, it's easier to go somewhere when it's like, uh, you, I mean, let's say you move to, I don't know, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> There's nothing to do. You know, you just it's f- funny. I was just there about. recently. So whatever. It, it, it doesn't matter. So it's different. It's quieter lifestyle. People are mostly relationship. They hang out, watch a movie. It's snowing outside. Let's hang out. It's not like here. It's always nice weather. Always going to go out, party. There's a lot of options here. I think that's the, that's also, the, that's the yeah. thing. And if you are a girl living in Miami and you are attractive and there's so many dudes that come here on a bachelor weekend and that weekend, a boys trip and something, they all always want to have girls around them in some kind of way. So there's always something to do for you if you're outgoing and if you are just like at the right spots where you can meet people. But... Yeah, I mean, a lot of my single friends are not happy. <laughs> not happy. Yeah, and you just hear complaints. No one says, "Oh, I had, I'm having." Re-. I mean, you hear it, of course, but mostly just complaints. People just complain in general, but no one say, "Oh, I'm a, I'm not a perfect uh, girl to date or a guy. I'm not perfect." Rarely someone says that. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Oh, the whole scene is bad." But you're part of the scene. Mm-hmm. You're part of everything. So you gotta blame it something yourself. You know. Also, I noticed a relationship. A couple of people I talk to, and they're saying, "I know it's difficult, with women. You have a hormonal, like." was imbalanced but how's it even called <laughs> so let's say we have bad days good days mm-hmm. you know so women have a longer stretch of bad days mm-hmm. i mean i know it's difficult but uh, it can be really challenging with the guys can you can can all the women kind of fight that a little bit or not is it possible to just okay suck it up a little bit i'm gonna try to even if no, i don't feel you can't good really, it's like it's like you can't really suck it up <laughs> when you are you know going through your cycle just you know what's funny you know those like Apple watches and those metrics kind of working out mm-hmm. devices? They were all, before, like now they're becoming more advanced, but they were all tested on men because you always have the same level of, I don't know, hormones or something, but they couldn't even test it on women because our hormones naturally go so much, like it just it's just biology, you can't really fight that. So when girls... I mean, it's it's very hard to be a woman. <laughs> I think that's my conclusion. It, it, definitely, but I yeah. think it's. I mean, I'm not saying you just can't don't don't. Well, you, you can work at a ten percent, twenty percent. You know, yeah. you can like guys. You're nervous one day, but you just not not gonna take it out on someone. You know, just a little. But I know it's difficult. So a lot of relationships also have problem with that. You know, with what? With like girls being a little crazy for like for two for a prolonged time. That's like for like a week or two. You know, I understand week. I mean, if someone's like two three weeks grumpy. Who's gonna deal maybe with that's this? not. Maybe that's just like a personality trait in that case. But you say, oh, you blame it on this. That's what I'm saying. This is just an excuse. Like, oh, I'm not. You know, it's, it's normal. So, but I heard a couple of people complaining about that, which is really unusual. I'm like, okay, I mean, I have that much problem with that, but I I know what it is. You know, but I was like, no one even mentioned that that much. It's like, oh, I was guys. Are, I think they were afraid to mention it because there's nothing. Nothing you can do about it. You can just deal with it. <laughs> that's that's a, that's a, a problem I've never really heard about, honestly, when it comes to like relationships. But I just hear girls complain about guys not being consistent and like being hot and cold, and they just don't know what to do, and then they just act out. Yeah, pro- I mean, yeah, but it's hot and cold. But also, if some some person is not changing, and your hormones are going like this. Maybe you're hot and cold and the other person is not moving at all. But then you shouldn't be with them. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. But it's, but it's really, I mean, I think mm-hmm. you, you can you can work on it. Every, even guys, I mean, a lot of guys are you know, grumpy, nervous, and all this. You can work on everything. So, And also I have one good example that one of my friends actually talk, talked about it. His girlfriend fixed her, her problem mm-hmm. to a point. She still has problems. He's like, he's like, for months and months and months, he's like, okay, I know, I know, but you got to work on this a little bit for me. If you want to, and she did it. To a point, not everything, but everything can be, can be done. So, and uh, tell me when you're, if Coco just came to New, New, New Jersey, you fly down, you meet her, you see her in the airport, you get five minutes with her, what do you tell her? What do you tell her? You should tell her that she should trust herself more than other people mm-hmm. and that things are going to work out <laughs> and that life is going to be okay. 
I think sometimes when you go through life and like you, some situations happen and you take them a little bit more dramatic than they are. And it always works out in the end. And again, I don't want to give all these quotes, but like rejection is the redirection. And if something happens in your life that you're not really happy about, maybe you get fired from a job or you break up with somebody. It's like, it's saving you from a long-term problem, I think. Uh, so, um, I mean, we're talking, you're talking most relationships. So right now, I just forgot to ask you earlier, uh, what are the biggest red flags for guys and for women? For, so, so, Red flags. Okay, let's see. I think when, I think consistent, if you're thinking whether or not somebody likes you, that's a red flag. Like if somebody... If you are into a relationship with someone, you shouldn't question. You shouldn't feel weird whether or not he sends you a text or is he not replying for five hours, you know, on purpose. Is he like you shouldn't you shouldn't question the relationship. If a, if somebody likes you, they should show you. Then I think if if you're at a date and somebody's talking about their previous relationship, about their exes, whether it's a boy or <laughs> boy or girl, whether it's a guy or a girl. <laughs> If somebody's saying that they're all of their exes are crazy and they're all fucked them over, they're all just, you know, bad, obviously that person is the bad one. You can't make everybody crazy. What if you like those kind of persons? I mean, if you like toxic relationships, that's... So that's what it leads to that because people are attracted. You don't want to get bored. So it's kind of the line between being bored and interesting. People are... They like have that anxiety. You think butterflies, and you know what, what it is. You're in love, you have anxiety, you have <laughs> issues you deal with. So It's also what you saw when you were growing up. If you were growing up in an unhealthy household, your parents were constantly fighting in front of you. Maybe, you know, your parents were divorced and then your mom was c complaining about your dad. Or like if you just grew up in an environment like that, you thought that, that was normal. So that's what you're trying to mimic growing up. And sometimes people just are not willing to work on their issues. So if you go through a really traumatic relationship or you experience a loss, you can't just move on like nothing happened. You have to work on it. You have to see a therapist or like whatever you can do. You have to work on your issues somehow. But when it comes to red flags, tell me what do you think women, like what red flags you see like in modern dating world when it comes to women? A guy is mostly, I think, roll over <laughs> their eyes and like, oh crazy like for when you, when you get leave that kind of impression so we, we are afraid of crazy people i mean some guys like it because they know they're gonna dump them sooner or later you mm -hmm. know but it's mostly like oh she's crazy get get out of here you know but crazy in what way i mean just just the impression someone comes on oh you just you feel it i don't even know how to explain it but you sense when someone's crazy I'm like, so, let's say one of my friends gives the girls like oh actually i just had a restraining order my ex-boyfriend and you're like ooh. I mean, just she's crazy. You know, <laughs> she's whatever. She, imagine having restraining order. I I wouldn't use not a even a guy did it, but okay, crazy guys, it's fine. But women having how bad, how crazy are you when you have a restraining order? <laughs> that's that's something. I mean, but definitely, I mean, if it depends what you're looking for. If you want to sleep with someone, if you want to date someone, you open up Instagram and you're just like. You can see the pictures. Mm -hmm. Based on that, you can see she's a girl who wants to have a family. She's a market herself. She's only fans girl. What she want. You see everything, you, unless you're into it. So, so that's the that's the whole thing. But definitely, I think just the feeling. You, you mm -hmm. feel when someone. What, what do you like? And also, it depends on what a guy wants. What I always wanted, you know, dating. You know, we're gonna come home, peace. Mm -hmm. um, come home and just day was crazy or right? they come home in an argument and she just she's talking to about this with this complaining arguing. that's never that's never you a good know thing. i have another quote for you if you want her to act like an angel make sure you're providing heaven that's so can't agree more if you expect not you but like in general oh, if yeah. you expect your girlfriend let's say you come home and you have a meal ready the house is clean and blah 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 like, are you being a good enough boyfriend for her to want to do that? And some women, like myself, like I work constantly. So my boy, he also, my boyfriend also works constantly. So we haven't, you know, we kind of know that I'm not going to be the homemaker. But you have an understanding of this. That's yeah. the number one thing. He knows. But some guys to. just assume that because a girl is a girl that she's going to do all of those things. But they... You know, they just don't understand. Sometimes. Some people expect different, different. Some a lot of guys can't cook. Let's see, and they're. 
Back you know home. what else I also think? Like, how can people not cook? Like, there's a set of instructions. You follow the instructions. If you have a job, for example, if you work in, I don't know why I would say finance. If you work in finance, you're very smart. <laughs> you have certain rules that you have to learn. You go through all these like tests and series seven and all these crazy tests and you have an instruction. Okay. Boil the meat, not boil the meat, actually. See, <laughs> <laughs> Good cooking instructions. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can make boiled meat, but like, you know, boil the potatoes for 20 minutes, then saute your onions, then put that piece of meat on a grill. You refuse to do it. I mean, you're yeah. less talented and more talented, but you, everyone can, can do it. I think people just don't want to do it and they use it as an excuse. Again, we're saying, we back to like, oh, women are saying, I don't want to, guys the same, I don't want to. That's just the stupidest thing in the world. And you say, yeah. I don't want to, do it. you can do it. You just refuse to do it. It's not, someone's asking you to build it's a It's not rocket. your priority. And I also think that if you have a really busy, busy schedule and you have a lot of things going on, you should you know, sometimes even outsource stuff like that, like order and do whatever you want. You can't just like cook and then clean for three hours after and it's it gets a lot. It's a lot, but you know, people have high expectations, but I always say, you know, make sure you, pro like you said, provide heaven, provide. <laughs> you what, always what you say giving? that. What, whatever. <laughs> now you're going to say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it, it really, I mean, I don't like double standards. If you're giving everything, and I also, you have expectations. I don't have like those kind. I'm not big on expectations. Like you have to do this for me. And for me, it's peace, the number one thing. That's the, don't like, no honest arguments. Or, I don't mind arguing, but like talking, figuring stuff out, talking about certain things, but just getting like about stupidest thing in the world that don't make any sense. I just refuse to do it. You know what? Sometimes women pick fights because they just want to talk. That's the worst. Yeah. And they want to just feel like you care about something. And it's not even maybe they don't care about that specific situation. Like, why did you leave? Why did you leave all the dishes in the sink? It's not even, it's not about that. It's about her feeling not appreciated. And she's kind of, sometimes doesn't know how to communicate that. Yeah, that's, but I think those things, you put a thousand of those things and then you have a breakup and you have something that's not going to work out. You got to, well, sometimes I always say, you know, when you're, oh, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. You, you, uh, when you point your finger at someone, three fingers pointing back at you. That's, that's how it is. And this always like, always go, okay, well, you have expectations. What are you offering? I like that with the fan. I never thought about that. So that's the, I don't know where I got it from, but it's always makes every time I'm like, oh, you, no, I always, I stop, I try to stop myself before I say something because it was always like, oh, you, but maybe how about you change and see the reaction, you know? <laughs> but it's not always the case, but even, you know, accept whatever you did, you did something bad, everyone does something bad, you know, but a relationship and uh, it's difficult. People are trying to. I think people think it's easier. Like twenty years ago, thirty years ago, it's not easy. The people that think what? That, that, that it was easier back in the day. Mm -hmm. It was definitely not easy. Nothing was ever easy. It was different. It was different, but it was not easy. And everyone trying to, uh, whoever is trying to get better, I think they should at least get some advice. I think definitely should listen to you. I mean, I learned a lot. I listen. I listened to a lot of your stuff, and it makes sense. At least. What to me. did you learn? Give me one thing that you. Uh, learned. I mean, that's not from this conversation. No, definitely that I learned is the the advice that you're giving is, I mean, we agree on a lot of stuff. So, you know, that's why I was like, okay, so there's female perspective that I like also, which I always, I mean, I don't, I need someone to agree with me. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't agree on everything, but certain things, okay, so I see some of this understanding and saying, okay, some things are not okay. You know, expect something from guys because I want guys. When I want to go on a date, I'm going to take for dinner. That's a normal mm -hmm. thing for me. And I see someone's like not taking out for dinner, someone not covering their check. Mm -hmm. Those things for me, I'm like, those things for me are like, no, that's a mandatory thing, like you said. Mm -hmm. So we agree those things. And I'm glad that you are pointing at because you're going to get guys better because mm -hmm. the women are going to expect I that hope from so. guys. I mean, you, bit by bit, everyone, <laughs> we all, we all trying to get better. What do you tell me? Uh, what's the goal with podcasts? What are you seeing yourself in the future, like three, four, five years? Well, I love my podcast. I studied journalism, so I love, you know, talking to people. I love the media world and all that. I really get a lot of messages from women telling me that I changed their life or I improved their confidence or they just helping people. And obviously I want to grow it. I want to have my full production. I just, I love creating content. That's my full-time job. So I, I just love that. And I love learning. I think when you I interview a lot of, you know, therapists and experts and brand founders and people who just have something to say. And I feel like I learn so much by talking to every single person on my podcast. It's like you spend an hour talking to somebody and you can learn something. Like if you, if you don't know how to learn from people, then you're not listening. And everybody, you know, you can learn a new word even. I don't know. But you don't mean you're not going to learn. If, if interviews one hour. 
two sentences can make a difference. Yeah. You just think one thing. You know? you know, I'm sure that sometimes in some at some point in your life it happened that some random person said something to you. Maybe you were waiting in a Starbucks line and some guy turned around and they said something to you that changed your life. It's not changed your life, but at least you're going to be okay. And maybe he made sense. And then you say, oh, maybe I can fix this. Maybe I can do that. You probably, at that moment, you're like, nah, what is he saying? Yeah. But then later on, he kind of, it's still there. It's still there. You might, you might remember it later. I mean, so definitely, I mean, I told you, I, I like to say people should definitely con- talk to you. I don't know, contact you, but definitely ask you the questions and stuff. Women, you know, uh, what I would suggest to you, I mean, I don't take suggestions, but <laughs> be uh, even more blunt with answers because people deserve hard truth a little bit. No one's telling them. Because, yeah. And it should be more of that. It doesn't matter. I mean, you're not perfect. That's your opinion. Yeah. So you can't be like fixing everyone and the, people call you to ask for your opinion. And then you give them your answer. It's not, they don't have to listen to all of it, but it should be more <laughs> because people don't, even guys, women, it doesn't matter. No one's like taking, they want to they ask you something, but they expect things they want to hear. They, yeah, they and then when we don't hear it, then it's a problem. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like when people, when somebody's like, what's your opinion? And then I say my opinion. They're like, but why do you, I'm like, <laughs> didn't want to ask me. <laughs> Tell me also one thing, uh, dating, you're right now, it's like, from situationships, dating, uh, kiss, I don't even know what's the level. For me, I, I thought it was two levels. You start seeing someone, you're exclusive when you're dating. I never had those like steps. I don't even know. <laughs> so what are what are the steps for you? This is what I think. And I make, sorry, making it official. Also, you mentioned, I remember mm-hmm. making it like official. Like are we, for yeah. me, it just kind of goes into the flow automatically. That's how, mm-hmm. my, um, how, how I'm wired, but maybe it's different. I think when you... First off, you're single. Obviously, you start dating somebody. When I say dating, like you're going on dates. You guys are seeing each other. It doesn't mean anything. It means you're single. You can date multiple people at the same time until somebody shows you that they're worth of you kind of just like devoting your time to them. And then people have this like exclusive, oh, we're exclusively dating each other. But for me, that's nonsense. It's like, why would you exclusively date somebody, but they're still not sure if they want to be with you? Like they don't, they're not sure if they want you to be their girlfriend. They don't want to call you their girlfriend because labels are too much, but so why? So then you're not sure because if you were sure you would not let her slip, slip away. This is what I also say. Like if you are, if you have a chance to go on a date with Megan Fox, would you take her to a coffee date or would you take her to a nice restaurant and provide an experience? It's because you want, because you want her. I love Megan Fox. So it's like <laughs> you want to impress Megan Fox and you want to make sure she doesn't say no. So if you are like, ah, I'm not really sure, it's either that you might not want a relationship, which is totally fine, but you guys have to be on the same page. You can also date, if people want to say this exclusively without labels, but like just be aware of where you're going with that. It's like if somebody's unsure of you, for me, that's a no. And when my boyfriend and I started dating at some point, like we were seeing each other. And then at some point he said something like, oh, but you're my girlfriend. Actually, no, he didn't say He said like, oh, you're my girlfriend or something. I'm like, no, I'm not. You never asked me. So then he asked me officially. Officially. It's like, he has to be official. It has to be official. I mean, for me, that's what matters. Some people don't care, which is totally fine. But for me, it doesn't make sense to exclusively see somebody. And then they don't want to call you their girlfriend, boyfriend. So like you go to, let's say somebody's birthday party and they're going to say, oh, this is just this girl that I'm exclusively seeing. <laughs> like what? But if you take someone like something that matters to you, some kind of, it's kind of, you're together. That's how I see things. Maybe that's just all. But also I get questions when people are like, my boyfriend can tell me that he loves me. Like he's doing everything. He's showing that he loves me. He's the best boyfriend ever, but he just can't say the words, I love you. Why? Also, I mean, I can add on that from experience back home and stuff. The, the I love you in uh, in United States is too sleazy. I started losing the, 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 just I don't like it anymore. Because people, uh, you meet someone, you see someone, people don't even, they're not even good friends of your friend. Hey, I love you, bye, I love you, bye. And then you go home, you say, I love you. Then you say, I love you to that person that you don't care about at all. Mm-hmm. But you have to be nice to say it back. I stopped saying it back a long time ago because they say, I'm just... I mean, I like you, cool, good guy, good person, or if, and then you say I love you, then like you just love everyone. Then it's just so easy to say it, and people don't don't mean it really. So I think it should have more weight on it. I think in relationship, I know what you mean, and I agree with that. But in an actual relationship, a romantic relationship, if you need to hear the words "I love you," and your partner is not giving that to you, that's just you're just not on the same page. Definitely, that's yeah. That's if someone is. Ex- I mean, I don't like expecting, but it should just 
be normal things saying and you don't have to like if you have to think about it and but it depends how you raise how you how many times you heard that word uh, how often you <laughs> use it if some let's say some people have to some people can't even hang up the phone without saying i love you to another yeah. person and i love you i love you just like just three thousand times a day it doesn't matter you have to say i love you when you say i love you then you, someone turns and it's like oh a special moment you say and then it's making it more special that's, that's how i see it but you know everyone Every, yeah everybody needs different things in relationships but i think that people should be on the same page. And if you are needing that verbal affirmation, like, you know, five love languages, everybody has a different love language. If somebody needs that, you should give that to them or just let them know you're never going to give that. And they should be okay never receiving that. And also, they said dating around. You're dating around. You Can you be like, if you're not 100% focused on one person, how do you actually, if you see five people, you don't care about neither of those. But I think it's just keeping your options open. It's almost like if you're you're looking for a job, you're not going to apply to one job and just wait. But when they call you for one job, you got to take it. Yeah. It, so that's, like, you that's, to, let me, let me see other five. Let me see other five jobs and then I'll figure out the job. It, it's, we got to focus on one. You get one. It's like you got an interview. You want to start tomorrow? Oh, there's no option. But dating is like, oh, let me try this. Let me try that. Let, and then you have too many options and then you, can, you can't make a decision because we're not supposed to have that many options. I that's, think the job offer is like an exclusive conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little bit different, but <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so complicated. People are mm -hmm. making it even more complicated with all the dating and the. But that's the apps. thing: when you meet somebody, it's it shouldn't be complicated, and then you see that. Can't agree more. You see it from the day one, day one moment. First, the, you know. I mean, and then you're like, okay, maybe I want to date here. I want to do this. Then, if you start thinking like that, then it's ship a sail. You know, that, that, that's gone. But it's like keeping my. I hate that. Was um, we'll figure no. I'm trying to figure it out. I don't believe in that. You feel something, you want to do this, something with some, some other person or no? I don't think it's that, that complicated. As soon as you have, oh, you know, I'm talking to this guy. I hear that, I'm like, no, that's gone. That's gone. I can't be always like, you like the person or you don't like the person. That's a, I agree with that. That's, that's something. Oh my God. So, yeah, I had a really pleasure. It was, it was fun. Thank you for we it. We had so many. We can do this for hours. This I think is we interesting, yeah. More, more, <laughs> more things to talk about. But thanks for coming You, you wanted to learn a lot about relationships. I think that's That's very, something interesting. Yeah. You're going to get to the, I talk hear a female to, perspective. Yes, definitely. Because, I mean, I like hearing... I mean, you have two ears and one mouth. Mm -hmm. You got to hear some stuff. And <laughs> you want to improve in your relationship and life. And, mm -hmm. and you're not supposed to be afraid of at least some of the comments. I make mistakes every day. A lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And everyone should just hear the other perspective, you know. How are you going to get better? I'm trying to get to know females better so I can be better. Women. Say women. women. <laughs> I don't know. We were talking male, female, guy, girl. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. So women. I know. <laughs> that was a joke recently. Somebody was asking me, how can I improve my relationship with females? And I just said, maybe call them women. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like yeah. That's great. Thanks. Thanks, <laughs> You're going to remember forever. Yeah, now, now I'm going to pay attention to every single word I said. <laughs> That's also an English part. English has got to be careful. Every word can mean, if you put a different context, yeah. it means so many different things. I mean, for us especially, it's difficult. Like, so many times when I'm recording my podcast and then I'm watching it, I'm like, shit, how did I, why did I say it like that? It's so weird. But then it's an I immigrant remember, thing. I remember the translation for earlier. I left my own uh, devices. Mm -hmm. That's the, uh, when you said... Uh, oh, yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that yeah. was the word when I was like, yeah. Yeah, I heard you said device. I'm like, yeah, that's the... It just yeah. dawned on me. The immigrant. Yeah, <laughs> good story. <laughs> All right, I have fun. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>